Project Management for the Masses podcast, episode 37. A blueprint for publishing your own book with Patrick Snow. Project managers, have you ever felt like you should get that promotion or a better job? Start a business, write that book. Have you ever felt you were made for more but didn't know where to start? Welcome to the PM for the Masses podcast with your host, Caesar Abade. Learn from the experts, think outside the box, have a voice, network, and be extraordinary. PM for the Masses podcast. Hello, everybody, and welcome once again to the Project Management for the Masses podcast. My name is Cesar Abade, your host, and this show is your weekly reminder that your career matters more than your job and that your life is a project and you are the manager. Whether you work for a company or for yourself, your job stability is really just your ability to land your next gig. So join me in practicing intentional, planned, and value-adding relevance, starting right now. All right, guys. Um, today we're gonna. It's 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 a uh, it's an episode. that's a bit a little bit of a follow up on last week's episode. If you remember, last week I spoke with Jeff Goins from uh, GoinsWriter.com on the topic of writing, and it was a very cool um, interview. Um, some of you, a lot of you guys, actually wrote me with feedback saying that uh, you know you enjoyed it, and a lot of you were familiar with Jeff Goins already from uh, his other um, things, uh, the other things that he does online. And the conversation was mostly about the art of writing and the, the, the human touch and, 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 you know, the philosophy and, and the, 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 the why writing matters. And it was very high level, very inspirational. And, um, and, and I really enjoyed it. And, and, and that was great. Today, it's a little bit, it's the, it's the, you know, episode two, I guess, on, on writing a book. And I'm going to have again on the show, Mr. Patrick Snow. And if you recall, he was the guest a few episodes back, I think uh, three or four episodes back. And uh, Patrick Snow is a, is a coach and he coaches people into publishing books. Very interesting. Um, he uh, was uh, uh, the keynote speaker at our PMI chapter symposium here a few weeks back, and I got to meet him in person. And at that time, I, I really was not aware that 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 he he helped people publish books. So we were hanging out during the the, the conference, and I just in passing I mentioned the fact that I was thinking of, of writing and publishing a book, and. Um, and he said, well, you know what? I am a book publishing coach. I coach people uh, into publishing and writing and publishing books. And, and I tell you what, I'll give you, um, I'll give you a one hour consultation free. You know, I like what you're doing. Um, I attended your session. You're, you're a good speaker. And I think a book would help you um, speak more and you would help your career. And I'd be happy to, to talk to you. So um, a f- couple of weeks ago, um, I actually took him up on the offer and we spoke for about an hour on Skype and in his take on publishing books just blew me away. I, it makes, it made a lot of sense to me, but he talks about it from a perspective that I had not thought of before. And you'll understand why when you listen to my conversation with him. So if last week's episode was about the philosophy and the art form and, uh, and the, the spiritual side of writing, today's about the business. Okay. So if you are not uh, interested in, in writing a book, uh, if this doesn't interest you at all, um, uh, you might want to skip today's show. But I think even if you don't have, the, if you're not planning on writing uh, a book, I think it's going to be interesting anyway, because it kind of kind of takes you uh, behind the scenes and, and, and shows you how having a book can open doors for you uh, as 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 a professional, you know, project manager or not, um, having a published book that is professionally done, professionally written, and looks and feels and, and smells like the real thing, because it is the real thing, really opens doors. And you've heard me say this many times here. So Patrick is going to tell us, you know, how writing a book has helped him and how he has helped his client. He has, he has coached uh, hundreds of people into doing this. He really knows what he's doing. And, um, and just a heads up, because he does this uh, for a living, uh, he will, you know, make an offer to you at the end to um, because, you know, it's his business. So just so uh, so you know to, to expect, there's going to be a little bit of a pitch, but uh, but 
really basically he's going to offer uh, you a, a free consultation so there's not going to be any money involved so if you'd like to to chat with him about uh, publishing a book uh stay tuned and listen in and you'll you'll see exactly how to do that and um I am making the decision because <laughs> one of the things I want to do here, and I talked about this in episode zero, is I want to drink my own Kool-Aid. I want to, uh, you know, uh, do as I preach. So I am making a decision to to write this book, and I'm going to use Patrick Snow as my coach. One thing that I've talked about here on the show several times as well is the importance of uh, having a, a group of professionals around you, either at a mastermind group or a networking group, or using coaches. For example, I had uh, uh, a guest here on the show, like Farnoosh Brock, for example. She is a coach. She, you can actually pay her to help you, you know, go through uh, tr- uh, career transitions or um, you know different things. And other guests that I had on the show as well, they do this for a living. And it does kind of sound um, a little counterintuitive, intuitive, especially if you're looking for a job, for example, you know that you're going to spend money to pay someone to help you through that. But it really helps you to have a coach as you go through transitions or or through projects or or through uncharted territories for you. I'll give you an example: if you listen to podcasts um, and you're on iTunes in the iTunes Store and you've been there looking for different shows, you might have seen. One of the top podcasts there, it's called Entrepreneur on Fire. And that is that podcast is hosted by a guy named John Lee, John Lee Dumas. I met John um, at New Media Expo in Las Vegas about a year and a half ago. We were both speakers. So we, we spoke at the same time. So a lot of people didn't come to my presentation because they went to his. Uh, we, had a, uh, we had fun talking about that. But at that time, he had been doing the show for about six months and he was still kind of picking up steam. And um, he told me his story then uh, that he he was in the army for, I think, about 10 years or something. And he saved up some money and he wanted to open his own business when he gradu- when he left the army. So um, and, and he liked podcasting and he listened to a lot of podcasts. So he actually seeked out, searched for, um, he got in touch with one of the podcasters that he l- used to listen to and offered uh, to pay for her to to coach him through maybe starting a podcast or getting into the online business. And I think he paid her, I don't know, like a thousand dollars, a couple thousand dollars, I don't know exactly how much. Which sounds out it may sound outrageous to you, right? But um, you know, and, and she said yes, and she kind of took him under her wing wing and took him to conferences and introduced him to, to people and, and showed him the ropes. And he started a daily podcast. Now fast forward a year, not even a year. This guy has the number one podcast in the iTunes store. And you, uh, his podcast won the iTunes uh, Top Podcast Award for 2013. And he won a trip to, to, to Cupertino to, to, to visit the Apple headquarters. And hang, he hung out with the iTunes team there and learned all you know uh, what Apple is doing when it comes to podcasting. And not only that, he turned that podcast into a business. And he's making... Um, six figures every month <laughs> he's making over a hundred thousand dollars a month with his business and he can trace back his success to that coaching session he had uh, um, way back when at, in, when he spent you know a thousand or a couple thousand dollars which sounded like a lot at the time but now it'd be a drop in the bucket for him it was totally worth it for him so what i'm trying to tell you here is um i believe that coaching and 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 you know, investing some some time and some effort, some money, some resources into getting coached through something can really be worth it. And writing a book, when I think about writing the book, and I think a lot of my writing block was a uh, writer's block was because the whole process is a bit overwhelming and, and unknown, right? Like, how do you get ISBN numbers and Library of Congress and and graphic design for the cover? And, and, and then you have to write the book itself. It's just a lot of work and it's kind of um, intimidating, right? So uh, Patrick is a guy that has done this several times. So I, I in my mind, at least it's a, it's a no-brainer to to go and, 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 and do this um, under his wing. So... I am uh, uh, making a pledge to you right now <laughs> that I am going to do this book this year. And I uh, most likely, well, you know, almost 100% sure that I will be working with 
with Patrick. So let's get to the interview. I hope you enjoyed. Special guest coming up next. PM for the masses.com. PM for the masses.com. Hi, Patrick. How are you? I'm doing great. Thrilled to be here today. <laughs> Welcome back to the PM for the Masses podcast. It feels like it was just yesterday that you were a guest, and uh, I had to have you back. <laughs> well, I was very excited to meet you in uh, London, Ontario, Canada, and do the speech for PMI. Great group of people and had a lot of fun. Yeah, it was great to meet you. We met the night before, and then uh, we you even came to my session there, which uh, it was kind of made me a little nervous, but... <laughs> <laughs> but you were you were you were natural. Ah, thank you, thank you. And and well, just for the listener here, um, and that you know the fact that you came to the to the to the session and we talked about book publishing and then we had a, a talk about your whole thing about being a coach for 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 book writers and and I had no idea and and you just you you really opened my eyes to to the possibilities and and to the process of 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 publishing a book and the listeners know that I've been talking about this for a long time and I think uh getting to know you and 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 the process that you that you um propose seems to be um that like could be a good fit for me you know and and so I like you know last week we just had uh Jeff Goins here talking about writing from a more like philosophical perspective you know and, and the the art of it and all that and i thought i i bring you here to the show today to talk about the business side of things because that's the, the way that you present it is really compelling um about the you know the benefits of having the book and and what it does for you for your career especially if you're into speaking and, and getting paid to speak which a lot of the people in my in my audience here uh, are either doing that or they, they they'd like to do that so and you talk about the book being the great the world's great greatest marketing secret explain that to us well to me you know i look at it as a book as nothing more than a hook an attraction magnet a lead generating tool it's a physical website it's a fat business card that you give away to your speaking prospects as meeting planners you give it away to coaching prospects you give it away to consulting prospects and there's a lot of talented people all over the world a lot of uh, individual companies that you're competing with to secure that book of business whatever it is and so what I found over the years when I physically given my book away to meeting planners my chances of getting booked as a speaker are ten times greater when I give my book away to coaching clients uh, my chances of securing them as a coaching client are ten times greater. And then the consulting that I've done, I've gotten all my consulting gigs because part of the presentation has been giving a book to any of the individuals that are looking at hiring me as the consultant for their organization. So to me, I found that a lot of people think a book is what the content of the book is. And to me, a book is the platform that you stand on. It is the branding that you create. And it's the big differentiator between you and all of those other people out there that are attempting to do what you're doing. So to me, a book is all about credential and credibility and communicating that credential and credibility to the world. And for that reason, that's why I believe it's the world's greatest marketing secret in the history of our business. And the other part of that is many other things that people do is, you know, you could give somebody a business card with the website on it. And yeah, websites are great. But just because you give a business card to somebody doesn't mean they're going to look up your website. Um, you could give a flyer or a brochure, uh, a sample of your product or service to the customer, but still they might not use that, they might not try that, they might uh, throw the brochure away. But when you physically gift a book to somebody, a book has a shelf life of upwards of 100 to 200 years. And so for those reasons, that's why I believe it's the world's greatest marketing secret. And it certainly has worked in, for, for me and it's worked for many of my clients in that same regard. Mm -hmm. No, I, I think I think that's uh, that makes a lot of sense, and I think a lot of, including myself, I, I actually believed that even before I met you. But um, the, the writing a book just seems uh, such a uh, intimidating project, you know. So, can, can you share with us your story and how and when you published your your first book, and and, and how did that work with you with your career as a speaker? Well, I'm 45 years old now, and I got started in this business when I was 17 years old. I was the captain of my high school varsity football team back in Michigan. I live in Maui, Hawaii now, so I've kind of been slowly moving west over the years. But I was born and raised in Michigan, captain of my varsity football team, giving the pregame speeches. I absolutely loved it. And so I took a speech class in high school, and I got an A. A speech class in college, I got an A. And unfortunately, in the other subjects, I didn't do quite so well. 
but uh, nonetheless, uh, I so much enjoyed speaking. So I graduated from the University of Montana in 1991, moved to Seattle. I got into corporate sales. And during that time in corporate sales, I moonlighted in the speaking business. And between 22 and 26 years old, I gave 300 speaking engagements. And the point of it is, is I failed 300 times to get paid. I got, <laughs> I got free breakfast, free lunch, free dinner. And every now and then I'd get lucky and I'd score a free pen or a free mug. So finally, being a Christian, I had to come to Jesus talk. And I was like, what am I doing wrong here? Why can't I make it in this industry? And the answer I got back was through this you know, self-reflection was, if I want what others have, I must do what others have done, and I took uh, an inventory of all my speaking mentors at the time, people like Brian Tracy and Zig Ziglar and Dr. Stephen Covey, Mark Victor Hansen, Tony Robbins, uh, Les Brown, and every single one of those professional speakers, they all had one thing in common, and that was they all had successfully self-published their book. And so I knew at 26 years old that I needed to do the same thing. The problem was I didn't have any talent. I think I got C's in all my writing in English classes growing up, high school and college. Uh, never enjoyed writing. But I knew that if I were to launch my professional speaking career, I needed to write and publish a book to kind of stabilize or build that platform. So over the course of the next five years with no talent, no skill set, no knowledge, no experience, no contacts, I spent five years of my life and $20,000 self-publishing a crappy version of Creating Your Own Destiny which came out in 2001 at 31 years old. And as a result of that first book, uh, immediately I started getting paid speaking engagements, immediately coaching clients started coming in. And uh, we've had a pretty good run over the last 15 years. I think we've sold somewhere between about 250,000 books and a million books in five languages in 108 countries. And every year I would update that book into a second edition, a third edition, a fourth edition with new chapters, new stories, new aha moments, new learning experiences. And now what once was a crappy 140-page uh, self-published book is now a 300-page hardcover book with no grammar errors, no mistakes. And uh, we went down that road for 10 years. And then about uh, four years ago, I did a two-book deal with John Wiley and Sons out of New York. Uh, they bought the rights of Creating Your Own Destiny and my second book, The Affluent Entrepreneur. And so now they own the rights. But but through that process, that's kind of how I began. And then one speaking engagement led to another, to another, to another. And through that process, uh, I learned that the book was the most important tool to market myself as a professional speaker. Wow. that's <laughs> So So, how many books, uh, if you add them all, how many books have you sold today, to, to, to this uh, day? We've got the book in Russian, Arabic, Indonesian, Spanish. English, so five country, uh, five languages, 108 countries, many different uh, um, foreign publishers. And the problem with all the foreign publishers is they all sandbag their numbers and they're all mistruthful or untruthful because they don't want to pay the royalty on that. And so I know I've sold about a quarter million copies of the book in North America, but once you take the book internationally, uh, I'm estimating about another three quarters of the book. I get emails from people all over the world on a regular basis telling me how my book has changed their life um, in like places like uh, uh, Canary Islands, a uh, Spanish-speaking island off the coast of Africa, in Madagascar, in the Ivory Coast, Cameroon, um, places like uh, you know Singapore, um, you know uh, Tuera del Fuego in uh, Argentina, South America, all these places that I've never really known about. Uh, the book has traveled and sold very, very well, but yet the publishers still sell, tell me they're not selling any books. So that's my best estimate, between a quarter million and a million books over about 15 years. Wow. I'm, I'm not in the business, but it sounds uh, pretty impressive, um, especially when I do numbers in my head here in terms of revenue and things like that. <laughs> it just sounds like a, like a good business to be in. But you, you talk a lot about uh, self-publishing and, and then you know uh, publishing with an with established publisher like Wiley. Um, what are the publishing options and, and what's the difference and what's the advantage and disadvantage of each? Well, there's really three major publishing options uh, and I'll get into all three of those. But you also have a company like Amazon's Create Space and then also Lulu. And I look at Amazon's Create Space as nothing more than a prototype printer. Uh, Lulu, same thing, a prototype printer. You need five or ten books and you need them in three or four days, you know, go to those companies. Uh, they don't really have the quality that you really are looking for in terms of hardcover 
you know, French flaps. Um, and, and a lot of those companies like that, they're just cheap, quick, and easy. And most people that are not very new or knowledgeable at the publishing industry, they just kind of accept those books, not knowing their book could look 10 times better. So uh, to me, really, you only have three options. And option number one is the traditional New York publishing option. Um, those are companies like uh, Putnam, Penguin, Wiley, McGraw-Hill, uh, those types. Typically, um, you know, you could wait your whole life and never get a publishing deal done. I think I was rejected for about 10 years before I finally got my deal done with Wiley uh, four years ago. Uh, and here are the numbers. If you have a manuscript completed, you have a 1 in 1,000 chance of them actually reading your manuscript. And then if they read your manuscript, you have another 1 in 1,000 chance of them actually buying the rights and publishing your manuscript. So it's about two you know, chances of one in a thousand back to back. So it's really like one in a million. Um, obviously, if you're a professional athlete, a movie star, a celebrity, then of course you're going to get a publishing deal done. But for the average person on the street, it's not going to happen. And the only reason why they bought my books is because of the volume of books that I sold. That's the only reason why they picked me up, because I'm certainly not world famous. Um, but through this process, what I learned in the last four years is uh, my publisher has done absolutely nothing for me. Mark Victor Hansen, A Chicken Soup for the Soul, with 500 million copies of his book sold and in print. He says that a publisher today, a New York publisher today, is nothing more than a company that pays for the printing of the book. So it's a huge myth to think that these publishers will actually market the book. They do absolutely nothing for you other than pay for the printing. And so I tell my clients, if you can afford to pay for your own printing, then there's no reason to give away 100% of the rights to your, to your book uh, and then never get paid uh, again after you get your small $5,000 advance. So that's option one, and as you can see, it's not even really an, a real option. So option two, go ahead with the questions on that. No, I was just going to ask, so, so, so you said that, so you self-publish first, and then when you had, you know, I don't know, 200,000 copies sold, that's when uh, they picked up and they published for you, uh, Wiley? Is that how it worked? Exactly, and, and as a publishing coach, I figured that there'd be more credential, more credibility if I could coach and teach both self-publishing and New York publishing. Uh, each year, I'd have about 50 people say, you know what, I want to invest in your coaching system and help you get my book done, but I see that you only coach and teach self-publishing, and so for that reason, I want to hold out for a New York publisher, and so I'm not going to use your system. Uh, and I would hear that time and time and time again. And so I realized as a publishing coach that if I got a, a book deal done with a New York publisher, then those 50 people per year, I could coach them as well. And the funny thing is uh, the, the VP of publishing at Wiley said, Patrick, I know you've got several hundred publishing clients all over the world. And let's just be clear. We're not interested in publishing any of their clients' books, not a single one of them. But when you have a client that sells 10,000 copies of their book, you send them my way, and I guarantee you will buy the rights of their book. So just do the math. 10,000 books times $20 a piece would be $200,000 in revenue. So why in the world would you want to give up a future $200,000 so that you could sell your books to a major publisher for five grand? It just doesn't make sense. And so to me, uh, I don't tell anybody to go the New York publishing route unless they, too, want to be a publishing coach. So that's option one is New York publishing. Not even realistic for most people. Option number two, if you go to the internet and you type in self-publishing or just publishing in the browser uh, and on Google, you're going to get about 1,000 to 2,000 companies that pop up. And virtually every single one of these companies are a scam. Every single one. I'm on a personal crusade to put all of these companies out of business. And I'm not going to mention any names, but they know who they are. And the reason why they're a scam is they charge their clients anywhere from $2,000 to $20,000 up front in advance to publish their book. And then at the end of the day, when the book is ready to go to print, the publisher, the internet publisher, as I categorize them, they keep the PDF files of the cover and the PDF files of the text. Now, the reason why this is important is whomever controls the files controls the print run. Whomever controls the print controls the profit. And so what they do, these authors that don't know any better, they give these internet publishers a bunch of money up front in advance, and at the end of the day, three to six months later, nine months later, their book is now ready to go to print. And then that publisher says, okay, so now we're off and running. Um, you need to pay us $12 per book. And if the author isn't very savvy about the printing industry, they're going to think, okay, I can buy it 12 and sell it 20 
buy at 12 and sell at 20. Well, what that internet publisher is doing is they're printing that book at $12 a piece, and then they're going to their printer and printing for $4 a piece. And then every book that's printed, that internet printer, for years and years to come is making $8, $8, $8, $8. And that's the reason why I think this is an entire scam of an industry uh, for the internet publishers. And there's an old saying that said when the pirates landed on the East Coast, they uh, left the pirate ships and joined the publishing industry. <laughs> hundred years ago. And now you could say that the grandchildren and great, great, great grandchildren of those pirates, they too, now they're in the internet publishing industry. So that's option one and option two. And so based on that, option three is what I coach and teach. And that is full-fledged self-publishing. And the rule in self-publishing is, is that under no circumstance do we ever allow a third-party middleman to get between us and the printer. And so my clients, they want to get their book in China, they can print for $2 a book. If they want to buy the book in the United States, it's 4 or $5 a book. And so if a book is nothing more than a lead generating tool, a physical business card, the reason why so many people fail in this business is you can't give books out like business cards if you're paying $12, $13 a book. But if you're purchasing your book from a printer at $2 a piece or $4 a piece, you can certainly give those books away to bloggers, to radio and TV producers, to magazine and newspaper editors, to meeting planners, to coaching prospects, to consulting prospects. You give the book away as a lead generating tool, but it's so difficult and expensive to do that if you got to pay $12, $12, $12, when all my clients are paying 2 to $4, depending on page count, hardcover, softcover, if they print in the U.S. or Canada, or if they print in China. So those are the three options. And so option number three, again, it's the same thing that Benjamin Franklin did, Henry David Thoreau, Rudyard Kipling, Edgar Allan Poe, Mark Twain, anybody who's everybody in the publishing industry, we all got our start in self-publishing. And the reason why, it's the only guarantee that you'll ever be able to get print, uh, published. Number two, you keep 100% of the rights. Number three, you own 100% of the copyright. Number four, you make every last decision throughout the entire process. And then, of course, you control the quality. And then you pick the printer, and I have like 20 or 30 different printers that I give my clients a choice to use. And they can call and use any of them. And I've been working with them for 20 years, so I know the good ones and the bad ones out there are saving my clients time and money. So those are the three publishing options. There's only one option in which you can make money, and that's full-fledged self-publishing. Because what we're doing is we're teaching people how to legally print currency. And what they're doing and what you are doing, Caesar, with your book, what I do with my book, is we are basically taking $4 of our intellectual property we're printing that in the form of a book, and then we're selling that for $20 in soft cover or $25 in hard cover. So we legally print our own currency. That's what we do. That's what this business is all about. And unfortunately, you can't make money in the New York publishing route. There's no way to make money in the, uh, the internet publishing route. So that leaves self-publishing as the obvious choice. And that's what the smart business people do as they move forward with their books. Uh, let, let's shift gears a little bit. Talk about the, the numbers a little bit. Like, uh, let's say on average, um, f for people who follow what you what you teach, um, how much would it cost? Um, just ballpark, maybe a range, you know, a low end and, and high end, to 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 publish, to, you know, to get a, the, your first shipment of your self published books, and and how does that compare with some of the the opportunities that having that book will bring, you know, in the next, in the, for, in the subsequent like six months, for example, you know, do you have any stories that you can tell from one of your clients? Yeah, exactly. Um, I would say this, I, I, I spent myself, uh, $20,000 in five years. That was 15 years ago when I didn't know what I was doing. Uh, now that I've engineered all of the time and money out of the process, now my clients are getting published in two, three, four months, maybe five months, six months, if they're really, really slow. And their total investment is probably going to be in the six to seven to eight thousand dollar range. Uh, obviously, if they're hardcover and they're four hundred pages, that's going to be a more expensive book in the eight thousand dollar range versus uh, a soft cover book that's two hundred and twenty five pages might be more like in the five to six thousand dollar range. So I tell people you're looking at a break even point of about three hundred and fifty books sold. So when you sell three hundred and fifty books, now you've got your return on your investment. 
But I want you to know that we don't do this business because of the books in terms of selling books. Yeah, it's cool to go ahead and sell 200, 300 copies of a book after you give a speech. But the real reason that you write the book is, and I'll talk later about this in the holy grail uh, of the industry, is that you use that book to get the speaking engagement. And now every time you give a book to a meeting planner, that could represent a five or a $10,000 speaking gig. Or maybe you're getting 5,000 or coaching clients. So the reason that you write the book is not to make money selling the books. The reason that you make that you write the book is to give those books away to speaking, coaching, consulting prospects, so that you can earn twenty five hundred, five thousand, seventy five hundred, ten thousand from these speaking, coaching, and consulting opportunities. So that's the real money in the uh, publishing business. The gravy money is when you sell a hundred, two hundred, three hundred copies after a talk, after a speech. So that's just extra, and that's just a bonus. Yeah, and and this is this is the, 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 the probably one of the main reasons why I, I wanted to talk to you about this because it just sounds like a, a tremendous deal, especially when you consider the how long it takes to to, to self publish. You know, a few months, and then uh, let's say it, it, let's say having the book generates two or three business opportunities for you. That 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 pays for the book and and you know, all your costs, and you can have it all paid for within the year. You know, and that's. Uh, to me, at least, very compelling. And if I wanted to to write a book before, now it's it's <laughs> put 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 a fire in my behind. You know, let's 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 get this done. Um, but but let's say um, people who have been following me and and on um, the Google Plus community and some of my tweets, they probably know that I've been having a hard time uh, writing. You know, I set myself uh, uh, a goal to write every day and journal and write blog posts. So what if the listener right now would love to write a book, but they're not a very good writer, for example, or, or they don't know what to write about, uh, but they like the idea of, of having the book to, you know, for all the reasons that we talked about here. What advice would you give them? Well, first off, you don't need to be a very good writer. Um, I'm an international best-selling author, but I'm certainly not a very talented writer. Um, and people that know me personally know that is the case. I just have a very solid team of editors and proofreaders and typesetters and cover designers, and they make me look way, way better than I really am in terms of talent. So you don't need to have talent. You just need to have discipline, raw, sure, perseverance, and determination to get it done. Uh, I coach and teach my clients the writing formula, the professional speaking formula, the DNA of creating a chapter. Uh, I teach them how to apply their stories and uh, I show them how to tell stories, how to write stories, how to uh, craft and create the book. Once you know the model of how to put together a book outline, how to craft a chapter, uh, how to incorporate your stories, it's easy. All you have to do is follow directions. Over the last 15 years, I've, uh, I've helped about 750 entrepreneurs all over the world, fiction and nonfiction, children's books, legacy books, biographies. You name it, we've done it all over the world, help them publish books. And every single one of them, literally about a month or two months into my coaching, they're like, this is so easy if I just knew the directions. And that's the answer, the truth. I mean, think about this. If you have a GPS and you've been to your house and you're four hours from home and you know where you are, it's so simple to get home because you have the technology and you've been there before. But if you don't know where your home is and you don't know where you're going and you don't know where you are, then it's very, very overwhelming. And so what I do is I break it down into bite-sized pieces. I put my clients on an author diet where they write just a little bit every day. I help my clients understand that your book is your speech, your speech is your book, your blogs are your book, your book are your blogs. They're one and the same. And so many of my clients come to me and they uh, learn ultimately that they already have all of their content created. We just repurpose their existing blog content into that of a book using the DNA of a chapter, using the DNA of creating a world-class book outline, and using the DNA of the writing formula, the professional speaking formula, and how to use stories in your work. And once you know those things, it's really not that difficult. My first book took me five years because I didn't know what I was doing. My second book took me six weeks because I it was way better. Uh, the book that I did the other day, uh, I, I, uh, I've written a book last week and I got the, ho the whole darn thing done in about five days uh, because it's that simple now that I know the formula. So that's what I coach and teach and I take the hard work, the blood, sweat and tears, the time, the money, the agony out of it 
And most importantly, I tell people what you should write about because the reality of it is your book is your coaching practice. Your coaching practice is your book. Your book is your speech. So what we need to do is we need to write about the most booked speaking and coaching topics on the planet, such as leadership. That's the number one book speaking topic on the planet. Change, the number two most book speaking topic on the planet. So I help my clients take an inventory of their passions, take an inventory of their experiences, their skills, and then I help them develop the theme, the book outline, the title, the subtitle, the whole thing. And so they don't have to know the answers to these questions. All they got to do is spend 15, 30, 45 minutes every day. And in a matter of months, we can deliver them a world-class New York quality self-published book with the New York publishing imprint that they own 100% of the rights and they keep 100% of the profits. Wow. Um, all right. And <laughs> that's... That sounds uh, that sounds crazy. It's it's uh, so so. This is a system that you come, that you came up with, right? So uh, when you talk about you know, let's say on the high end, um, costing eight thousand dollars, does that include um, your coaching or is that separate? No, that would include my coaching. Uh, my coaching fee would be in there. Um, I charge a one-time flat coaching fee, and anybody that wants to see what that is, I've got several different options. They can go to my website at the publishingdoctor.com three words www.thepublishingdoctor.com there they can look at all my pricing um, and my coaching fee is for life there's no expiration I coach my clients on publishing writing book marketing speaking coaching consulting small business strategies publicity and media training they make a one-time investment in my coaching fee uh, and then I serve as their coach for the rest of our lives with no expiration date and I give them literally 25 years of intellectual property in this information empire uh, business that we're a part of. Um, and I dump that data into their mind over 3, 6, 9, 12, 18, 24 months. And my goal is to help them make uh, 10, 20, 30, $40,000 as quickly as possible. Two examples. One woman just got a $40,000 consulting gig because she gave a copy of her book to the corporation and the guy that she was meeting with and he said this is a real book and she said yes I'm a real consultant <laughs> and they they proceeded to hire her at 40 grand so she got a 4x return on her investment just on one client and she's done another fifty to hundred thousand dollars in speaking above and beyond that another client of mine uh, in uh, Houston Texas she runs a nonprofit titled moms against hunger dot org and she feeds families of uh, catastrophe all over the world the Philippines she was just there uh, with the typhoon that they had in December, and uh, I told her to use her book as a lead generating tool. She lived in Houston, Texas. I said, give your books away to all the oil tycoon billionaires that are at your church and see what happens. And so she did just that. She came back 90 days later, and she said, Patrick, oh my goodness, you're not going to believe it. A billionaire in my church gave me a $100 million piece of land uh, to build the distribution center on the river between Houston and the Gulf of Mexico for my business, MomsAgainstHunger.org, because I gave him a copy of my book, Growing the Leader Within You. And uh, uh, and she said, it's, you know, the reason why he did this, he would have to give that to the IRS had he not donated to my nonprofit. So I tell my clients, that will never happen again in the history of my lifetime. Um, so nobody on this call or, or listening to this uh, podcast should ever think they're going to get a hundred million dollar real estate gift. It will never happen again. But that's what I coach and teach is use the book as the tool, as the platform, as the branding to build the rest of your business. For me, it was the greatest investment that I've ever made. And, and it's amazing what happens when you do this. Wow. That's uh, that story alone could be a book. <laughs> Now, uh, Patrick, you mentioned the holy grail of a professional speaking industry. Can you elaborate on that? What do you mean? Well, about 15 years ago, um, I had just had gotten the book published. I was just trying to figure out how to make it as a speaker. One of the challenges in this industry, 31 out of 32 people fail in the professional speaking industry every year. I believe they fail for two reasons. Number one, they don't have a book. And so if you don't have a book, you can't get booked. Without a book, nobody takes you seriously. Nobody in the media recognizes your expertise. So, or if they have a book, they certainly don't give the book away as part of their marketing strategy. So what I've done from day one is I've looked at my book as a lead generating tool in about, I don't know how long ago it was, 14, 15 years ago, 12 years ago, 
I mailed a signed copy of my book to a meeting planner in uh, Florida. It was for ASA Tire Software. They were out of New Hampshire doing a conference in Key Largo, Florida. And I lived in Seattle at the time before I moved to Hawaii. And um, I sent them a signed copy of my book, my speaker one sheet, a cover letter, the front page USA Today cover story, some testimonials, my highlight video. I sent everything. But most importantly, the most important part of the package was the signed book. So she called me. She said, yes, we want to book you. They paid me $5,000 up front in advance, six months before the event, round trip airline ticket from Seattle, two nights hotel accommodations, and they called, covered all my expenses. I did the speech in front of 500 people. I got a standing ovation, and most times I don't get standing ovations unless it's an entrepreneurship type audience, a sales, full commission sales, network marketing type of organization. That's when typically you get standing ovations. But most times you don't get them. I got one on this particular time and I was blown away. I couldn't believe it. And so after the meeting, I went up to the meeting planner. I said, look, I just need to know what was it about me? Why did you book Patrick Snow? What was it about my message or my, my marketing? And she said, oh, my goodness, Patrick, we got 47 emails from 47 other highly qualified speakers all over North America, U.S. and Canada. 47. Every one of those emails had an embedded video link of the speaker's highlight video in that email. And we watched 10 or 15 highlight videos. And they were all great speakers. And they were all funny and humorous and entertaining. But then all of a sudden, Patrick, you were the only one that mailed us a signed copy of your book. And that's the reason why we booked you. And I said, well, what do you think of the content of the book? And then she said something that changed my life forever. She said, Patrick, there were seven of us on the speaker selection committee, and the reality of it was not a single one of us read your book. <laughs> and when she said that, I was like, oh, this is it. This is the holy grail of the entire speaking industry. This is it. And so from that point forward, I've done about $2 million, maybe $2.5 million in revenue. Uh, just one man show, just me working on my home office. Over the last 10 or 15 years, uh, so not in one year, but over the course of those 10 years, 10 to 15 years, that's been my revenue for that timetable, all because of I realized that the holy grail of this business for speaking, coaching, consulting is you mail a book, and then you sign a new uh, 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 speaking uh, a contract. You mail a book, you bring out a note, another consulting contract. You send a book, you get a coaching contract. And so... What I've done is I mail out 10 books, I book four speaking engagements. I mail out 10 books, I bring in six or seven coaching clients. And so to me, writing and publishing the book to use as a tool to give away to your prospects has become the holy grail of the industry. And as we talked about earlier, it is the world's greatest marketing secret in the history of our business. And everybody else is saying, oh, that speaking business is not working. I sent out a hundred emails to a hundred meeting planners and I didn't get a single speech. And I say, you know what? I didn't send a single email and I booked four because I sent 10 copies of my book. And so that's the difference because a book is a real thing. There's a mentor of mine, Dan Pointer, who wrote the book, The Self-Publishing Manual. And he says that in North America today, the number one most respected career in all of North America is that of a brain surgeon. The number two most respected career in North America today is that of a published author. And so if that is the most respected career, then that means that writing and publishing a book is more important than an MBA, a JD, an MD, a Juris Doctor, an accounting degree, all these advanced degrees. I'm a big advocate of education and higher education. I've gotten and earned my degree, but it's the book that's open doors for me that my education never could. And so for me, writing and publishing a book is far greater than having an advanced degree. Wow. Um, <laughs> that's really compelling, I have to say. Uh, and we talked about this briefly the other day um, um, when we talked on the phone, and um, you gave me a little bit of an overview of this whole thing. But this is um, when you illustrate with stories and and uh, in your experience, it just comes to life and it just makes a lot of sense. Um, so I'm glad to, to see that my idea of writing a book, um, it, it was actually a good idea. <laughs> you, you're living proof of it. Now, 
so let's say uh, you said that there, you know thirty two what is it thirty one out of thirty two people don't get to publish their book. So what are some of the biggest mistakes that people are making when they try to to publish a book? Uh, I would say uh, the biggest mistake is they select an internet publisher that uh, prevents them to have a relationship with direct with a printer. And based on the fact that now you know how important it is to give away your books like business cards, you just are never going to make it in this industry if you're stuck paying $12 a book. You can't afford to give away the books. And so that's the biggest mistake is using an internet publisher that prevents you from buying your books from China at two bucks a piece or four dollars a piece from the United States. Another mistake is putting your mug shot, your, your photo, your image of you on the front cover of your book. That's a huge mistake because people see that and they assume the book is an autobiography and because they don't know you from Adam, then they're just not going to buy the book. And so I tell people all the time, the front cover is for the reader and the back flap is for you, the author, for you to put your bio there. So that's another uh, a, a mistake uh, about the publishing industry. Uh, I tell people all the time, uh, if you can't afford to go the hardcover route, go the hardcover route. And that will separate you from all the other mom and pops out there that are trying to publish a book by having a crappy uh, a book. Uh, another mistake is that people will rate uh, a 60, 70, 80, 90 page book and they'll have it printed. And to me, that's nothing more than a booklet. So the fatter the book equals the fatter the paycheck, the more respect that you get in the marketplace. So you want your book to at least be 50,000 words or about 250 pages. And when you do that, that's going to um, make a huge difference in the, the credential and the credibility of the book. Uh, another mistake would be um, relying on somebody else to do the publicity. I got on the front cover of USA Today, in the New York Times, Forbes Magazine. I could go on and on and on. And I've done all of those media things, 500, 600 radio and TV interviews all over the world all because I am the one that spearheaded my publicity efforts. We cannot rely on somebody else to do that because nobody knows our messages uh, quite the way that we do. Next mistake is to focus on Amazon.com and bookstore sales. And Amazon is the world's greatest place in the history of the world to buy books. I buy all of my books off Amazon. But Amazon, Barnes Noble, bookstores worldwide, they are the worst place in the world to sell books because they take 65% of your profits and then sometimes you get paid, sometimes you don't. You might get paid 30 days or you could get paid 180 days later. So what I coach and teach is sell your books direct to your reader by eliminating all third-party middlemen, by doing that directly off your website or by doing that when you speak. And then I would say another mistake in publishing a book and marketing the book is once the book is done is not speaking on it. The greatest way to become a, a best-selling author is to speak, speak, speak. If you can't get in book speaking engagements, then do your own workshops and seminars. Because I believe what Bob Moad taught me is true. He said this. He said, when I speak, business happens. When I speak, business happens. So I've been doing workshops and seminars on publishing for years and years and years. And one example I'll share with you real quick. I did an event. We had four people sign up, and I was just getting ready to cancel it. I'm thinking, I can't drive two hours and take a ferry boat and go speak for four people. And then I remember Bob Moed's message, when I speak, business happens. When I speak, business happens. And uh, as a result of that, I thought, okay, I'm going to go do this event. I know that two of the four won't show because 50% typically don't. I went to the engagement. Two didn't four. There was only a show. There was only two people there. One woman says to me, she says, Patrick, I'm sorry, but... Uh, I've got to go for a dentist appointment in 15 minutes. And I was like, oh my goodness, I'm so embarrassed. Here I am, I'm doing a talk and there's one person there. So embarrassed. And so I figured I was just going to sit around across the table from him and do Q&A and talk about the publishing business and whatever else. As soon as she left, I'll never forget. He whips out his wallet, pulls out his Visa card, says, here's Patrick, has $4,000 for your coaching. Let's get started. Um, charge my card, let's make it happen. I'm now so excited. I get a three hour private coaching session directly with you. So charge my card, let's make this happen. And in that moment, I realized the truth of that phrase is that when I speak, business happens. So to answer your question, a biggest mistake that people can make is not speaking once they've got their book in print. That is the way that you succeed. And uh, there's a whole lot of other mistakes that help people avoid as well.
Mm-hmm. I've had a number of guests here in the show, and they all talk about the value of having a book and the value of the value of writing, and the value of um, of speaking. You know, and and this is why I make a I make an effort to 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 speak whenever I can. I mean, I'm not. I'm not at your level, not even close, but I've just started. But um, I, I see what you mean. Uh, when you go to a networking event um, and and you sit in the audience, it's it's a even for networking purposes. You know, when you when you're a speaker, then people come to you and they 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 want to network with you and they want to, you know, and and, and as you said, there are opportunities that that spring up from from being a speaker, and it's a lot harder when you're just uh, sitting in the audience. You know. Um, so I, I agree with you and I can only imagine, you know, if you have the book behind you, um, that gives you credential, uh, you know, credential and, 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 uh, you know, and if you can sign it for them, um, that can be really powerful. And, 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 um, yeah, so that's really, that's really, really exciting to hear. Now, Patrick, you, obviously you do this for a living and you, and you coach people and, and, um, and so how does that work when you when you work with a client? I mean, it sounds like you're, from, just from our conversation here, it sounds like you're pretty um, uh, involved with the process. So how does how does it work? So let's say um, I, I want to write my book and, hey, um, I want to use your expertise and, and your system. And, and so how does that go from that point on? So once my clients engage with me, they fill out a, a, a little coaching agreement because I'm not the publisher, I'm just the publishing coach. They're going to own 100% of the rights of their book, keep 100% of the profits of their book, make every last decision. We uh, initially will do our first coaching session by phone or Skype, which is 60 to 90 minutes. In that session, we'll nail title, subtitle, tagline. There's three award-winning title formulas that I spent $3,000 learning many, many years ago, so I'll teach my clients those formulas. And then we come up with a theme of the book. Then we come up with a table of contents of the book. Then I give them the writing formula, the professional speaking formula, and the DNA of writing a chapter. And then by the end of that call, they will literally, in that next week, then they will get their book outline done, identify the stories to include into the book, and perhaps maybe even write their first chapter of their book. Um, And then from that point forward, every week for the rest of their life, with no expiration date, I will do a one-on-one call with them every week for the rest of their life, basically serving as their accountability partner, as their mentor, as their publishing coach, answering all their questions, introducing them to my suppliers, vendors. All my clients get a 15-page, 65-step publishing coaching roadmap with uh, all my editors, proofreaders, typesetters, cover designers, printers, book distribution companies, ebook companies, uh, all of that. They get that as part of this package. Plus, they get the one-on-one call per week. Plus, I give them my 52-step book marketing business plan. Plus, I do six live group coaching calls every week, Uh, one every Monday morning, and then one every midday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, so six live calls a week. And then I do six live intensives, three-day, 30-hour bestseller publishing institutes per year. The next one's coming up May 6, 7, and 8 in Tacoma, Washington. Then we're going to do back to Honolulu, Hawaii, July 25, 26, 27. And then they get unlimited email access, unlimited text, and anything and everything that I've learned in this information empire industry over the course of the 20 years, they get that at no cost once they've made that initial investment. And people say, why do you do the unlimited, no expiration date? Because the reality of it is, with some of my clients, I'm able to give them all my intellectual property in 6 to 12 to 18 months, and then I may never hear from them again because they're so busy that they don't have time for me. Or others might take two or three or four years, and those people may only want to talk once a month because they're busy, too, building their day job and and writing their book part-time on the side. And so that's kind of what they get. But bottom line, it's 20 years of intellectual property uh, communicated and transferred into their mind as quickly as possible and then unlimited communication throughout the life of, of, of me. And at 45 years old, I'm going to be on this planet another 55 years to live to be 100. So I'm not going anywhere anytime soon. <laughs> now, um, just for the, for the listeners, I had, um, we had that, uh, you, you offered, when we met in person, you offered uh, me a complimentary call to talk about book publishing. And we, we did that a couple nights ago. And, um, and it was fantastic. So, um, and uh, do you, we talked about you offering that to our listeners as well. Is that correct? 
Yeah, so I would li- give anybody a complimentary, no obligation, 60-minute publishing, book marketing, consultation by phone. One-third of my clients come to me already with a book in hand, but they're struggling. They don't know how to market it. Uh, the other two-thirds of my clients come to me uh, wanting to write a book. So any of those people will give them a complimentary 30- to 60-minute publishing consultation by phone or Skype. The way that we set this up is I'm going to give you my private cell phone number. And the way that this works is you guys just text me. Uh, and the reason why is email with spam sometimes doesn't work and spam folders and all this junk mail that we're getting. So the best way I'm trying to do all my business by text, my private cell phone number is, and please don't share this with anybody unless they want to write a book, <laughs> is 206 310 1200. Again, that's 206 310 1200. 206 310 1200. Send me a text. Let me know your name, what time zone you're in, and then maybe a little bit about yourself. And then I will text you right back and we'll schedule that complimentary one hour publishing consultation, book marketing consultation, professional speaker consultation, wherever you're at in your business. We'll schedule that in the next two, three, four days. And we'll do that by either e- uh, by phone or pre- preferably by Skype so we can see each other. And the fact that I live in the middle of the ocean out here in Maui, Hawaii, it's a whole lot easier uh, to do the Skype than it is to get on planes and go travel all over. So absolutely, yes, I would be thrilled to uh, offer that to any of your folks listening to this uh, to this podcast. Well, um, after 36, 37 episodes, you're the first guest to give uh, their personal phone number <laughs> on the air. So that you're brave. <laughs> And let me tell you, the reason why you do that is because what happens is you drive business. And so for all those people out there that are listening, if you want more revenue into your bank account, you need to give your private number out more. And when you do that, you'll be amazed. The last time I did uh, did this on one of these teleseminars, we did $25,000 in revenue in two business days after the time that I did that. Uh, so people think I'm brave that I'm crazy. My point of it is I would just hate to have one of your listeners send me an email. It gets stuck in a spam folder or it doesn't get delivered and they think that I don't care about their work because I do. And so for me, it's unfortunate, but text is, I believe the best way to communicate. And, uh, I'm just grateful that we're not getting spam texts yet. And I'm sure that's coming at some point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so for those listening, and I know um, many of you have um, reached out to me uh, talking about your book that you want to write or a book that you are writing or the idea for the book that that you have. Um, I think uh, because, I, you know, as, as you know, uh, you, you're listening right now, you know that I've been thinking about this. So I've been doing research on self-publishing versus um, ebook and, and uh, going with the publisher and I even bought a, a few, um, couple of uh, products that are uh, coaching products and that teach you how to how to do these things. And it's a lot of work. And w- one thing that really was encouraging when I sp- spoke with Patrick is that he's uh, seems like he's done the research and he knows a lot about the business. So, um, so, so his fee, I, f- I found that it was you know um, really worth it because it's going to save me <laughs> so much uh, effort and time. And um, and I know that he's he's done this um, many many times. So if you are um, even if you are not ready to, to to write a book right now, or if you're if you already have a book, give him a call. Uh, Patrick is really open, and um, uh, it was a great great little chat that we had the other day. Um, and Patrick, you have a website too. So where can people find you on the web? Well, a couple of things, and also anybody that sends me a text, let me know that you came by way of Caesar. So put that in your text. And uh, I'll give you guys a $500 friends and family discount to Caesar uh, based on that. So hopefully that helps you. But the best way to find me on the internet, my professional speaking website is patricksnow.com. That's S-N-O-W. Again, that's patricksnow.com. And then my uh, publishing uh, website, book marketing website, speaker coaching website is thepublishingdoctor.com. All three words all spelled out. Again, www.thepublishingdoctor.com. But the best way to reach me is by text. Again, that's 206-310-1200. Give me your name, time zone that you're in, and a little bit about yourself, and we'll schedule that consultation. Cool. And all these links, and uh, can I put your phone number on the website? 
right ahead. All right. So all these links and Patrick's phone number will be on the show notes for today's episode at pmforthemasses.com slash 37. And that's for episode 37. You can also go to pmforthemasses.com. And I will most certainly add uh, Patrick and, and, and his uh, coaching services to the list of PM for the Masses resources. As you know, if you go to pmforthemasses.com and you click on resources there on the menu, there is a very selective list of things that I that I endorse and and um, this will definitely make uh, make the cut and it's going to be there on their um, on the resources. So, Patrick, thank you so much for your time. This is a little bit of a longer interview, but um, but I think uh, I'm sure it was worth it. The information that you have to provide is is awesome, and there is so much more that I know that uh, that that you can share but you know time is short here so for those who want to learn more about this business about the process of writing a book and is confused or or anxious or intimidated uh patrick is is your man so get in touch with him so patrick thank you so much for your time and uh take care of that uh those dogs and uh (laughs) funny hawaii there all right sounds good caesar thank you very much it's a pleasure uh chatting with you and anytime i'd love to be a guest on your on your program you are listening to the PM from Masses podcast. All right, everybody. I hope you enjoyed that. That was um, that. Uh, you know, I had my conversation with conversation with him, and um, be- obviously before I recorded um, our our interview, and then I said, "Man, I I need to have you back and uh, and to talk about this topic because your take is really unique." Um, so, what do you think about this? You know, am I crazy? <laughs> <laughs> I really want to write it, and I think uh, the reason why I've been stalling is that because I needed something like this, you know, that something like what uh, Patrick is uh, providing here um, to us. So I will keep you posted on, on this uh, on this project of mine, and uh, you might get an email from me, uh, and I might share some of the process with you as well. Some of this information is his intellectual property, so I, I'm I can't I, I'm pretty sure I can't share everything that's going to go on. Uh, but I think, you know, I can share a lot of it. And I think it'd be interesting to you if you are looking to to, to write a book to see um, the progress there. So um, you might get an email from me about this if you're on the mailing list. If you're not on the mailing list, go to pmforthemasses.com and you will see the box there to put in your um, your name uh, to get my free updates. And you can put, put in your name and your email address there, and you get you will get added to my mailing list, and then you'll get all the all the communications that uh, that I'll um, that I'll share uh, as I go through this. And um, I have a feeling that once I, I pull the trigger on this, it's going to be fast and furious. Uh, and, uh, uh, Patrick is, as you can tell, he's just um, uh, you know he he means business. So I think he's going to be pushing me a lot, which is exactly what I need. At this point, and um, and and also he's taking the guesswork out of it, you know. Um, for example, you know, let's say I write my a manuscript, and then I need uh, I need it a proofreading, a proofreading done. I would have to go and seek search for someone to do it, and then who knows if they're going to do a good job or the price is fair. Uh, having a, a coach like Patrick means that you know he already has a pool of people that works for him and, and he trusts, and, and the price is fair. So um, it's going to take a lot of my time. Uh, going to save me a lot of time to work with him. So I think it's going to be an interesting thing. So if you'd like to learn and and, and more and, and see and accompany me as I go through this, just go and, and go through the, uh, enter the mailing list there. And while you're at the website, you can send me a note as well. Put a comment there under the, the show notes for this episode at pmforthemasses.com slash 37. 37? Yes, 37. All right. Now, before I go, I'd like to mention um, um, a conference that's happening in the UK uh, related to earned value. And uh, this is uh, being partially organized by my friend Matthew Kidner, who is a a loyal listener of the podcast and also a member of the Google Plus community. He asked me to share this with you. And I looked at the the website. It looks like um, it's going to be a very interesting conference. And uh, you can learn more about this conference at EV, as for uh, earned value. So EVA in the UK, it rhymes, dot org. So EVA in the UK dot org. So it's a four day event, I believe. And there's a, the, 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 the theme is Project ABC, Agile, Benefits and Complex. 
So um, it's going to be a four-day event, and it's going to be from the 19th to the 22nd of May. So it's coming up fast. And um, and also on May uh, 20th and 21st, they're going to have, they're going to have uh, workshops around that time as well. So uh, the conference will look at how this ABC, uh, which, you know, which stands for Agile Benefits and Complex, can be made to work within a portfolio and how Agile fits into major and minor projects. So sounds like an interesting conference and being organized by, they're going to have a blues band, so can't miss that. And uh, it's organized by Matthew and, uh, and uh, a lot of other uh, professionals who are very, very competent. So I think it's going to be uh, a great one to attend if you are in the area. So again, go to evaintheuk.org or you can find the link to the conference under the show notes for this episode at pmforthemasses.com. So that's it. So what do you, th- I really want to hear from you. What do you think about all this? You know, um, I asked my wife the other day, am I nuts for wanting to write a book? Is this, is this something crazy? What do you think? You know, uh, let me know, go to a PM for the masses.com, l- leave me a note there, or just c- contact me through the email a link there. You can, you know, there's a form there, contact me form, um, or even go to the Google plus community. Tell me what you think. I'd love to know <laughs> what you are thinking about this. Um, and uh, I, I, I'm super excited. I think this is going to be great for for me, and it's going to be great for you to see what happens, right? So, I'm almost like your guinea pig here. Um, so, stay stay in touch, and then I'll uh, I promise I'll share as much as I can about the process and and and, and how much work it's involved, and how much money, <laughs> and all these things. Um, and uh, and let's chat. I'd love to hear your opinion. Have you written a book? Are you having a hard time? About promoting it or, or are you a successful writer uh, let me know your thoughts in short that's what i'm looking for again pm for the masses.com slash 37 and uh, i look forward to hearing from you and that's it for the show today i hope to hear from you soon and until next week and until then remember that life is a project and you are the manager ciao ciao Thank you for listening to the PM for the Masses podcast. Tune in next week for more great ideas on how to manage your projects better and truly stand out in your industry. PMforthemasses.com